after the September when this event occurred. And they said that uh, the two guys went off trail. So they went on a part of the park where people don't go. And they claimed that day they saw two. One was a, a six and a half foot tall brown female, and right near it was a smaller four and a half to five foot tall black juvenile. We think that what we got here is a juvenile, and that the scream is coming from an adult calling out to the juveniles. Yeah, out. because this this day, was this Sunday? It's in the Bigfoot Times newsletter. Uh, it's like the day of the week, I no, it was on the weekend. Yes, yeah, I was working the at the Los Gatos High School. Yes. And remember that we weren't even sure we were going to make this trip. No. It was I, kind of. I was skeptical about the man. No, I but but but, but I think we said, well, are we going to go or yes or no? It was still <laughs> right right to the very <laughs> end. Right to the very end, we weren't even sure we were going to go in this area. So then we finally decided to follow up on this guy's claim. Exactly. He said he had a nest, and then. Mike and I and everyone else and said, no, this is more like brush clearing. So we said, okay, enough of that. So here where the vehicles are on this side of the road, all parked, and we're just standing there. This is almost circular in formation. Uh, Ralph has the video camera, I guess, pointed towards the ground, but it's still yeah, on. Yeah, he's just carrying it with it on. And we're just kind of like, okay, what's our next move, blah, 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 just BSing. And then all of a sudden, the sound off the chart, and then I think I'm looking at now, you. Now, where's the guy who called when you guys are standing around? Is he there with you? Yeah, he's standing with us too. He's, I think he's heard on the audio tape. Yeah, he, he was meant by you and hear then him. What, once that episode was finished, we're all looking like, what was that? Here, it's right here. We'll play the whole thing right here. It starts with the. Now, uh, can you make a slow motion of that? Um, no, I can't. No, but this trip, there there was no planning behind this trip. We were not so no advance warning that we were going to be there. No, we didn't even know. We just said, hey, now, well. Right at well, the beginning, you hear him. This is Richie. And he's pointing at some marks in the ground across the street where the trail starts. And he's claiming our Bigfoot toe marks. And we said, sorry, but not necessary. We're not buying any of what he's no. telling us. And, uh. Now the screen has started right there. Do you hear that? doesn't do it justice. No, it they're being there it was like we're like what the we're just all looking at one another like and then I, I think I said to Ralph I said did you get that or did you, did you have the recorder going yeah. and he yeah. it was like yeah I just happened yeah, to have it going. Right at the beginning, I should have that and and I, I, I said oh wow I said, and then we came back here immediately and we, we uploaded it or whatever but uh, that was very interesting. No doubt. That's why that made front page news of the newsletter. Well, strange sounds. 
Do you want to hear another one we recorded of Zion? This one, a guy came in and reported having a seven foot tall crawler in his backyard. So he, a friend of his brought him in here to tell me about it. So he told me the story and I said, can we camp in your backyard tonight? He said, yes. So Ralph and I went over there and we set up a little tent and we waited. And 1.30 in the morning, this is what we recorded in Zion. <laughs> And every once in a while, there's a punctuated sound. Where is this occurring in relationship to this map? Nowhere near it. Whole different area. This is coming from that that away, four miles that away. And we were that away. We were 20 miles that away. Yeah. It is. Okay. Now, here's another one I'm going to play for you. It's at this location, which is three miles directly up this hill. The one we went up that night. Did I take you up to the quarry? You, I, and was it Meldrum or who, who was with us? Uh, Somebody geez. was with us. Yeah. That's right, we went up to the quarry. Yeah. We Probably just stood by the gate, we didn't go in there. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, well, this night we went all the way in and we sat there for four or five hours. And uh, let me show you this. We were there because uh, people up the hill had reported screams. And when we went to investigate the screams, we found this on the creek below their house. Hi. So, we had a feeling that there was something going on. Yeah, right but there. wouldn't you suspect this is a teenager type of? Of course you would. But uh, what's what's flagrantly missing from this location is any kind of trash whatsoever. Hmm. Well, we don't know how old it is, and it's been there now at least five years. Did Pilates get out to look at this? Pilates uh, uh, said he found one just like it in Hoopa. Very interesting. In his book, he mentions that. What is this? And he agreed with us that it's a blind. That look, was our interpretation. Oh. It is what you want it to be. So that happens stick to be located right down here. So we decided, OK, people are hearing screams. Uh, we've got a stick house that might be a, a hunting blind on the creek. Let's go to the headwaters of the creek. Well, guess what? This creek forms with the water that comes out of this aquifer here. It pours right down the side of this hill where it's been blasting. It goes over here and then forms Gold Gulch Creek and heads down that way. Now, when you you went in this area, you went in. Yes. And what did you did you was there any sign of people or teenagers? No sign of any people. Except when, when some of the you, sticks when, when that had been previously when, cut. When did you see this? Four or five years ago. So we went up there, and when we uh, when we drove up the hill at midnight, the thing that we noted first of all that was uh, unusual was that there was at least a dozen deer feeding up in the yards, quite a ways up the hill. Now I know the deer come across in the park here because I see them later. Now. We have a crossing, and they eat everything they can in the park, and they're protected over there. But at night, they come across the highway, and they feed in the river. And that night, they were clear up, way past the first bump in the road, and clear almost all the way up to where the quarry is. And that was unusual to see so many deer that high up. Um, I think they were there because they, they were hurting. But anyway, we, uh, we got to the quarry at midnight, and we could hear the screams coming from Zion, just barely audible. Like that. The scream I just played for you. It was identical to that. And we've heard it since so we've recorded it there a couple of times. So we're hearing this scream off in the distance. So we looked for the best location and we sat up our spot right here on a, a pile of gravel next to this duck pond. We could hear uh, ducks feeding all through the night they were feeding. And we sat there listening. 
for four hours before we got some action. And four hours later, we heard something closer. And so I made a noise. I did it like this. So that's instead of hitting the tree with a stick or whatever. So let me play the tape. I played this for Scott Nelson. He was really impressed. He's the one that told me the Bigfoot sounds that are in this tape. What did he think of the recording that we got? Oh, he, he, he was impressed by that, too. But he, he was really impressed by this because he recognized the sound. And this is from the Granite area? This is at 4 in the morning up there. Is this a Corleos film? No, this is a Dalton Quarry. So... start talking at once. They go nuts. And you're going to hear a scream way off in the distance. And then an identical scream right up close. And then I'll give you a cue and you will hear the Bigfoot. Here we go. Here come the screams. Right here. And here's the Bigfoot. Whoa, whoa. this point we started whispering to each other because we were worried that the coyotes were going to attack us because there were so many and they were all the way around us. But instead they broke off and they headed south and they went further down the canyon and left us alone. Let me play that sequence again that I described. Right here. All the birds are all making a noise. They're all talking. Nelson heard that. He said, that's a Bigfoot utterance right there. I've heard that on the tapes from the Sierras. He said that some of those calls at the beginning of this, some of those, whoop, it's Bigfoot, but it's not Kaya, in his opinion. We got the distinct uh, feeling that there were coyotes and Bigfoot both. But that's true now. Every time we've recorded them, there's always coyotes attached. So I went online about that time and started doing some checking, and we found all kinds of people talking about the coyotes being associated with the big experience. Want to go by? The BFRO had discovered the same thing. The Native Americans used wolves, trained them to, to help them hunt. That's how we got dogs. I think the Sasquatch are doing that with coyotes in this area. At least they have a symbiotic relationship. The, How so? The, the, I think the coyotes have learned that when the Bigfoot hunt, there's scraps left. They work together. And the Bigfoot share. And the Bigfoot and the coyotes are both pack animals, I think. Just like people. And I think that's what's going on here. And I think what they're doing is they're using this, the hill, the space in between parcels, where people don't build, where it's too steep. And that becomes no man's land. So you got a parcel at the bottom of the hill and it goes up the hill. You got a parcel at the top of the hill that goes down the hill. The people are using the flat parts of those parcels. And then the part that's too steep to build on is, is ignored and just becomes no man's land. And that's where these packs of coyotes and the Bigfoot are going through. And that way they can pass right through neighborhoods at night. 
and not be seen. And when they when people hear them, this they assume right they, yeah, they assume they're hearing coyotes. Oh my well, there was that one report of the guy saying that the one was mimicking his dog barking. The dog is in the house and Yeah. The excellent We've mimics. heard that a few times. Now this was was this this was 2007, 2008? Had to have been 2008. The year of the uh, conference, 2008. 2008, when I was here working. And, uh, that was really I'm I'm I keep hearing that sound, and then I I'm saying that is doesn't do it justice no. as to being there in person. You <laughs> had to have been there in that's person what I tell to say people like too. it. Just like here we were. Because the just sound was, around, it was so unreal, checking so, out, so big. We're, we're thankful, though, for that guy taking us out there. Mm -hmm. And then here we're standing, and all of a sudden, that sound is just like, whoa. <laughs> that was it. That was the ultimate that was reward. Something. Yeah, my one is the man. Say who that is again. He's the, one, Sanderson. He's, he's the one all the skeptics blame for starting this whole thing. <laughs> hold still, hold still, no, no, hold no. still. It's like there has to be gold in the ground before you can go search. You know, there has to be something there. One would think. But this, this, this is like what you're saying here is super rarefied goods. Yeah. And the so cover? So 61, 61, we're looking at 39 plus 12, 49. 50, 52 years old. Yep, still the Bible as far as I can see. So you can only see part of the legs coming up on an SUV. That's how big it is. You can look out and only saw part of the legs. The rest of the body was so much above this SUV. There was a fire a few years ago. Yeah. And, uh, she uh, told me that she noticed some things that were different after the fire. And I told her that I had always thought that the best thing to do after a fire would be to go and look for secret openings into underground passages where the vegetation is now burned away and something is revealed. And she said uh, we were welcome to come and check out her place. And oh, oh my have goodness. access to some of that land. That, that's that's so, a little story of the guy in Castle Rock. Oh, yeah, I got a detailed email from a guy who said he used to live on, on the North Valley up here above Castle Rock. And he said that uh, he and his buddy used to go hiking all the time. And their whole theory on hiking was to go where no one ever has gone. And so he said he went in deep into the woods up there, 10 or 12 miles. And he said he ran across, uh, first of all, he found some caves, some interesting caves. And uh, he went into one cave where it got really narrow and he sort of turned into a, a slick kind of a, well he said he thinks it was a, an actual part of the San Andreas Fault. And there was a slip line where, where the rocks had parted. And there's a smooth area where the two had rubbed together and then opened up. And he said he squeezed himself into one of these places and it was full of black little spiders with yellow uh, hourglasses on them. Wow. And he got freaked out and came back out. Yeah. And then they, they went a little further into the woods, and he said that he came across uh, it was a, 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 a tree stump. And he said it was a great big tree stump. It was only about two feet, three feet high. But the, the center of the tree stump had a hollow in it. And the tree had broken out and part of it had popped out with it and it made this hole in the center of the tree stump. He said something had cracked right on that. He said something had cracked in the hole and the old crack was there. And then there was a new one, a fresh one, that had been laid right on top of it. And he said it was the weirdest thing he'd ever seen and it was the weirdest looking poop. And he just thought it was kind of strange. It looked like something had stood on that thing and <laughs> crapped on it several wow. times. And then they went a little further into the woods and uh, they started having rocks thrown. And he said the rocks were hitting at a, uh, hitting trees at about head, head height wow. and literally knocking the bark off the tree. And he said some of these rocks were way too big for a person to pick up and throw. 
the distance that these rocks were coming from. And where was this again? Castle Rock. Up, up above Boulder Creek. Yeah. Up I, I was just at Castle Rock two weekends ago filming. <laughs> there's supposed to be caves. I've heard other people no. say. Bear this Creek. man said there's lots of caves up there. And he said he would be willing to come and take us there. Well, cool. 12 miles in, though. Yeah. So a 24 mile trek going away. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do that one with a TV okay. crew and a helicopter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that though? <laughs> Rocks <laughs> flying through the air, I could head see height, and through 12 miles. Taking the bark off. Taking trees. bark off trees. <laughs> Mabel, I think I'm coming. Well, that's Local pretty good accuracy system. too to be able to throw. Like, that's so then it's really funny. We had a chamber of commerce meeting here. It's a little mixer that they did. It's right here, and um, it was nice because it was an attempt by the local community to relate to us. And we had several people come, but there was only about 10 people showed up in the chamber. But interestingly enough, two of them had stories. Oh! <laughs> and what they told me was that these events had happened to them years ago, and they had never even thought about Bigfoot re relative to the events. But now in the context of what we showed them in the museum, they're thinking back and saying, oh my God, that could have been a Bigfoot event. Uh, this, this one. I think a lot of stories of haunted forests. And this was uh, the woman lives right up here. She said a year or two ago, she started being besieged by poop. She'd come out of her house in the morning and walk out the front steps, and there's this god awful gigantic poop laying on her sidewalk. Why? <laughs> on her doorstep, on her driveway. On her driveway. Been running around. Really? And so then she would get I rid of this thing, years, and then she'd come out the next day, and here's another gigantic poop right there on the driveway. That doesn't factor. Yeah. Does and this was happening so frequently factor, that she started talking to her friends about it. Man, I've got these poops showing up. What do you think of that? Huh? And one of her friends worked at Monterey Bay Aquarium, and she said, tell you what. You gather up a little piece of that poop, and I'm going to work tomorrow morning at the aquarium. I drive out of here at 6 in the morning, so I want you to get some poop, put it in a plastic container, and tie it to your mailbox. And I'll just drive by in the morning and grab it off the mailbox, take it down to uh, the aquarium and give them some of my cohorts down there who can test it and find out what animal it came from. So. Later that day, she got a call from a friend who said, well, I went by your house, but there was no mailbox. And the lady went out and looked and said, by God, the mailbox was gone. That's so true. She started looking around. Wow. She said she found the mailbox off in the woods. Something had pulled her mailbox, taken out and threw it in the woods. And she said from that point on, she never had any problem with the poop again. Wow. No, oh, you got question marks there. <laughs> and I said, lady, can we come to your house and investigate this? She said, yeah. Okay, I'm going to drive. So what part, what part of the area was that one? It sounds like it's close. It's right down the road. It's a block away. 110 Avila Drive, just down the street. We can walk to it right now. Yeah. And this was two years ago <laughs> when your friend was... Had there. the footprints in. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I, I go to the dog park and we saw an exception, but it was a big mastiff. Oh. <laughs> I mean, uh, the other animals leave small amounts. Yeah. So the other is uh, another lady, nice lady who made a nice contribution to the museum. Very nice lady. But she was babysitting. This was in 78. Uh, she was a high school freshman and she was babysitting. Uh, let's see, where was it? Oh, that's right. Moon Meadow. <laughs> the infamous Moon Meadow, where we have so many stories. She said it was about 9.30. She could hear something walking around outside the house. Crunch, crunch, crunch. She got the very, very, very extremely strong feeling that there was somebody outside looking in through the crack in the uh, curtains on the front window. And she was terrified. She got herself all worked up in an extreme uh, case of fear to where she crawled under the coffee table and she was crying. 
in fear. Oh my God. Because uh, something was out there. And she just knew it. She could hear it walking. She could feel it watching her. So she called her father, who of course drove over there and uh, came in the house with her, picked her up, checked around, couldn't find anything. And that was pretty much the end of it. Uh, he eventually took her home. They called the, the people. And she gave up her, uh, her babysitting that night because of the fear. Uh -huh. And this was at Moon Meadow right at the top. Right where the lady said she saw the uh, black hairy animal in the gully below her house. Right on the spot where a man said he heard something jump over a fence. The biggest dog got clear. <laughs> and right where uh, these two were a couple of nights ago uh, recording all kinds of sounds of things walking around in the woods. You should hear the tape that we got from that night. You can hear things walking around. You can hear crunch, 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 crunch. And there's places where it sounds like things are running. And then there's something tapping. Uh, banging. Sounds like banging. Uh, what sounds like a garbage can. Yeah, like a shed or a sign. Oh, yeah, it's metal. crazy. Is there livestock there? Cattle? Or no, there's no livestock there. But there's fruit trees up and down that street. And there are a few chickens. Whatever yeah. made that sound, it would definitely like had a human type of body. Because the sound, it sounded like we both... When we heard it, we both envisioned someone like with a stick or some type of heavy, hard object hitting like the side of like a shed or a sign. Like it, it definitely sounds like something's hitting something. And there was no wind, so it wasn't like, you know, a stick hitting something. Well, the only thing that makes noise around here basically are the deer. Right, and that or definitely cow. was not a deer. It well, sounded like something with an arm now, there's hitting deer. something. Well, <laughs> there's definitely deer on your tape, too. Yep, still the Bible as far as I'm concerned.